Coming to you from the campus of IUPUI, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tuning In with your host, David Rowan. Sponsored by the Campus Citizen. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to an all new episode of Tuning In with your host, David Rowan. Let's get right to it. Today, I have with me Emily Maroney. Emily, how's it going? It's going well. How are you? I'm doing okay. It's hot summer day. School's about to start, so I'm glad you're able to make it onto the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Let's get right down to it. So, Emily, tell us a little bit about your music history and background. What made you uh, want to start getting into the music business? Yeah, so I started playing guitar when I was about 10 years old. Um, And this was when Guitar Hero was really popular. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to play guitar. Um, So I started playing about 10 years old. And then I started, like, singing along as soon as I knew how to play chords, you know. Um, and then after that, um, in like middle and high school, I was really involved in like choir, musical theater and all that stuff, just wanting to perform as much as I could. Um, and then I went off to college and I went to Butler to study, uh, recording industry. And I was also on the track team up there. Um, and so eventually I ended up quitting track so that I could focus more on the music. And ever since then, that was probably about a year and a half ago. Um, I've just been writing, recording, performing as much as I can, so. So you study recording industry at Butler, correct? Yeah. So did that help you, um, well, what benefited you from that? Like what sort of, um, tips and tricks that you picked up on studying it to help you along with the music? Yeah, it was like a really, really beneficial choice for a major just because it was like, you know, I could have gone to any school and done, you know, kind of a more traditional music degree, but I didn't really like the idea of, like, my creativity being, like, stunted, I guess. Like, oh, you have to sing this song for this class, and you have to, like, you know. I just, I would I would rather do the music part on my own so I can kind of have free range of what I'm doing. Um, but this program was kind of unique in that it was only the business and audio production side of it, side of the music industry. Um, So it was like a perfect fit for me because I got to learn the things that I wasn't already doing and didn't already know about on my own. So it was like a perfect little package deal. Well, first off, you're a singer, songwriter, and self-producer. Yeah. How do you manage all of that? Just doing it by yourself or? Yeah, it's, um, I definitely haven't always, um, I've always written my own songs and perform my own songs, but I haven't always produced myself. That's kind of more of a newish thing, actually. Um, Just because I wasn't as confident in it before getting like the schooling. And um, so when I was in school, I kind of like relied on other people, you know, maybe upperclassmen to record me in the studios at Butler and then just by watching what they were doing down in the studios. And then also, you know, downloading Logic and that software on my own computer and messing around. Then I got, like, the confidence to actually produce my own, you know, songs. What sort of equipment do you use? So I just, I literally just use uh, Logic on my laptop. And I have a, um, a condenser microphone by the brand Blue. I think it's a Blue Spark. Um, and I put a little bit of foam behind me on the wall and then I just like track the vocals in my my little home studio in my room and um, I use a Scarlett Focusrite so the Blue Spark into the Scarlett Focusrite it's like an audio interface and then that also has um, like a guitar input so I can go through my distortion pedal or whatever pedal I'm doing into the guitar input into the computer too and then everything else pretty much is like MIDI stuff. So like anything like, you know, drums, bass, all that kind of stuff I do through MIDI. So what, what sort of instruments did you learn to use? And then after that, what sort of things that you learned or practice on your own, inclu- you know, that included the recording software? Cause you loop yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mostly only play 
guitar and sing. Like, those are the two instruments I would, like, be confident saying that I play. Um, But I've picked up some pretty good, like, rhythm skills through, like, just looping on the drum pad and stuff like that. So, like, my rhythm's good. And, like, um, I've learned some basic piano just from school and from playing these songs live. Like, you always, you know, if you want to do a synth or something, you've got to be able to at least play the chords or the scale or whatever. So I've got... Those are kind of, like, the basic... Um, skills that I have in those other areas but then yeah like you said I use um, my loop pedal when I perform live so it's a Boss RC30 it's two channels so on one side I can track a drum loop and then have that going through the whole song and then on the other side I might have you know a synth and a bass and I bring that in on the chorus or something so it's definitely um, really useful especially performing as like a solo artist because I can have that kind of full band sound just by myself. So that's been really cool. So you do the you do the harmony and melody too. Um, that again, was that self-taught or did you pick it up along the way growing up? Or and did you have you also collaborated with any other artists? Yeah. Um I yeah, so mostly like doing kind of melody and harmony and all this kind of stuff um was mostly it was either me figuring it out on my own, or, you know, I used to take um, guitar lessons and voice lessons as well when I was in, like, middle and high school, Um, so I've had some really good teachers that have kind of helped me be able to do that well, and um, in terms of, like, producing, um, I've worked with my friend um, Billy Thomas, whose stage name is One Dollar Bill, a lot, so he, and he and I still will, like, collaborate on production stuff, like, I'll send him, hey, what do you think of this, and stuff like that, so I definitely have, like, help along the way. What made you decide, okay, it's time to put my music out there, I want to produce my own EP, and I want to self-promote, what were some of the steps that you had to take up um, before, and What kind of reception did you receive? Yeah, so that was, it was kind of like a a snowball effect, that whole, um, that whole process, just because, you know, I kind of, as I said, I was running track before. And so when I was doing that at the collegiate level, I was like really, really busy with that because we were practicing hours a day and we were traveling all weekend and stuff like that to compete. So once I when I was doing that, I was releasing some music here and there, um, and performing sometimes like open mics and stuff like that, but it was hard to balance school track and music. And so once I, um, decided to quit track about a year and a half ago is when I really started recording my music all the time, writing all the time and performing like as much as I can. And over the past year and a couple months, I've, I've played like tons of shows um, like I try to play at least a few each month. You debuted your EP Blooming. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Was it, it was this year? It was released this year? Yeah. So that was released in April, but it was actually like a compilation of all the music I had released from the beginning of college up until this April with like the most recent new song. Walk with me through your songwriting process. What made you decide not only lyric choice, but sound-wise too? So my songwriting process has kind of like grown and changed over the years, but for most of the songs on the Blooming EP, it was like I would just go to the music practice rooms at Butler and I would sit down with my guitar and I would just, I would always start with melody. So I would just play chords and kind of sing gibberish along to the chords and figure out like a strong melody and then I would go in with lyrics so it would either be like sometimes I would be going through something that I was like I want to write a song about this experience Um, and so I would go in with that kind of with the vibe of the song that I already had in my head, like, oh, I want this to be kind of a sad song. So I'd go in and I'd try and write a sad melody and then come up with the lyrics afterwards. But sometimes I would go in and I would just be like, I need to write something. You know, I haven't written anything in a while or whatever. And I would just play melodies until I came up with one that I liked. And then I would kind of be like, okay, well, you know, now I need to come up with lyrics that fit this vibe. So sometimes the vibe came first in my head and sometimes the vibe came first 
you know, from just playing around. And then I figured out the words later. But yeah, so then the words usually are like something that I'm going through or something just that like is on my mind, I would say. Like if there's just kind of something I have to say, then I would like use music as the medium for that. Describe in a way what sort of uh, sound that you think that you can define yourself as. Sure, yeah. Um, on the first EP, the Blooming EP, um, I would say it was kind of, since it was all written on acoustic guitar pretty much, it kind of had like um, an acoustic pop like undertone. Um, but there was definitely influences from, kind of like you said, like, um, you know, electronic influences. There were some, like, soul influences. Um, but all the while kind of remaining this kind of singer-songwriter kind of vibe. But the the new EP that I'm working on right now is kind of going in less of an acoustic direction and more of a produced direction. Um, and so this next one has definitely more of the electronic and kind of um, danceable elements, as well as more like hip hop and R&B influences in the instrumentals too. So um, it's definitely going in like a really cool direction that I like really like, and it feels more true to like what I want to be as an artist and kind of what I want the vibe of the music to be. What were some of um, your thoughts and ideals that you were going through or your thoughts and emotions that you've experienced and then you decided Let's put this on the EP. Yeah, so a lot of the music that's on the Blooming EP is very, like, it's very focused on love, which I don't think is, like, uncommon for music to be. Um, But I definitely wanted to, like, approach my, especially my, like, lyrical content from a way that wasn't, like, so typical like oh I've heard this song before you know like I wanted to the main thing I wanted to focus on was like telling stories so you know this song is the story of what happened with you know this time in my life or this experience with whatever person and it's like I really wanted it to be too like I wanted it to be specific but also vague you know what I mean so like it's very like there's specific things that are like you know, maybe imagery or, like, sensory things that you can, like, almost feel yourself, but it's it's vague enough that, you know, anybody listening to it could say, oh, yeah, I've been in, like, a similar thing, and I, I've felt that before. You know what I mean? Before we get into, like, specific track list, was this EP um, sort of written off based on past relationships also? Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Mm-hmm. So there there were a few relationships that I've had over the years, um, you know, just in college, in high school, whatever, that definitely, like, inspired different songs. And some inspired more than one song, and some only inspired one song. But, yeah, definitely um, about just a lot of things I've, like, gone through in my, you know, love life or whatever. (laughs) Why Can't I talks about, again, not being able to be yourself. So walk me through that track. Yeah, so that one's actually really interesting, and I feel like I haven't, like, really talked about it in an interview before, which is really interesting, because it was the first song, so you'd think that I would have. But yeah, so that song, um, the lyrics are, why can't I be myself with you? Why why are you making me choose, basically? Um, and so the whole thing behind that was, like, when I was an early teenager, like, probably 13 or 14, um, I realized I was gay. And so that song actually is in reference to, um, like, I was pretty religious at the time. And so that song was actually in reference to, like, um, a specific youth group leader that I had that when I came out to her, she was, you know, trying to convince me, oh, you know, this isn't right and you need to pray and be different and all this stuff. And so that's what that song was. It was, why can't I be myself with you? And why are you trying to make me choose between being who I am and having like a religious experience? You know what I mean? And so that that's what that song was about. And um, I, but again, I tried to make it vague enough that it could be about that or it could be about who, you know, any kind of 
you know, circumstance in which you, like, feel like you can't be yourself around somebody, you know? I want to make m music that anybody can connect to, whether they're, you know, gay or straight or, you know, a guy or a girl or, who you know, whoever. I want to make music that just people in general can relate to and that, you know, it can it can be a story and it can make people feel something. And so that's definitely something I've had to um, just think about in terms of, like, you know, I don't want to, you know, isolate anybody or... Basically, I just wanted to make my music relatable to, to anybody, you know, to for people to feel something. And, I, you know, it, it doesn't even, to me, like, really matter, like, who it's about as long as it's, like, a relatable song. You know what I mean? The next track that sort of also stuck out to me was Magnet. Mm -hmm. And that was... That's more of the, um, I think, alluring sensual type beat because as soon as I turn it on in my truck I hear the bass and I'm like oh yeah. so like th <laughs> there's something about to go on here um the song spoke out to me that you know right or wrong feels good you don't know who's being used or who or right <laughs> things like that so walk me through that one what was you know what was going on at the time, you know, was it based on a real story or was it just something of pure, <laughs> something that you thought of or? Um, yeah, that was definitely based on a real story. Um, and it was just, you know, it was just about a situation where you, you know, I think we've all probably been in a situation where like, you know, somebody is really bad for you. Like that is not, that's not a healthy thing. That's a toxic relationship or whatever but you still want it. <laughs> and so that song was just kind of like a, a fun, um, danceable song, kind of the, you know, this is wrong, but it feels so right kind of vibe. Um, but I, I really just wanted to make like kind of a clubby kind of song that, it, it, that, you know, it took something that was, that can be a hard thing, you know, figuring out like how to handle a situation like that. But I wanted to turn kind of that struggle of like figuring that out and like, you know, listening to your mind versus your heart, you know, um, and just kind of make it into like a fun, a fun little dance song. So, yeah. Freeze felt more of like sort of a dream that you don't want to turn the clock back, clock back on to reality, that this is a picture perfect moment in a sense. Yeah. So what what was the story behind that track? Yeah, so that song, um, it was written about a situation I was in or a relationship I was in where it was in college, obviously. So I was dating someone who was about to graduate and we had like just started dating. And um, so it was like during those few months that I wrote Freeze and that song's basically about you know, exactly what you were saying, where it's like, you know, it's not going to last forever because of whatever circumstances. Um, basically, you like, you know, it's going to end, but in the moment, it's so perfect. And it's really great. And you wish you could just freeze time right then and just be in that moment forever. So that was the story behind that one. Taking a detour around the love songs. Uh see see me rise yeah that's more of a an, an independent sort of self-motivated let me do my own thing but watch out it's a big yeah. surprise yeah yeah so what's up with that track yeah that one's really really i really like that one it's one of my favorites off the whole ep um because it kind of has that up tempo i would say kind of like a vici kind of vibe like because it's got the acoustic guitar but like the club beat and everything so that one's really cool um, and yeah, that song is basically, it was, I wanted to do something up-tempo, another up-tempo song, and I wanted it to be kind of just that message of like, you know, I hope you're ready because I'm coming <laughs> type of thing. So, and also just to point out that like, there are things that I see that are like, things that I see going on in the world that I don't like and that I have something to say about and that like, I want to use my music you know, not only to be successful and be happy, but also to kind of hopefully make some kind of change in, like, the things that I see that are, you know, wrong with the world. Which track 
was given the most reception, the one that sort of sticks out the most, and why is that? I think probably the one that has gotten the best reception was probably Freeze, um, just because that song has a really good, it's a really good tempo, it's a mid-tempo, um, so not fast, not slow, um, it's just kind of a chill, relaxed vibe, um, but it's also kind of a message that I think a lot of people can relate to. A lot of people have been in that same situation. And um, it's it's just got a really good melody. It's it's a really catchy song. And from the EP, we actually have a sound clip from one of the tracks. It's Freeze. For people to listen to it, here's a chance. This is Emily Maroney's Freeze. The future's unknown, but right now I'm sure that tonight From social media, you've been sort of hinting at something that's about to, uh, well, you've got a big surprise. So what is it? So the big surprise is that I'm going to be releasing another EP on uh, August 25th, which is also the day that I'll be performing at Bloomington Pride, which is going to be such a cool day. It's going to be awesome. I'm really excited about the new music. And uh, it's definitely going in a really cool direction. So that's a big announcement. Can you tell a little bit about the EP? Sort of, is it a different sound from Blooming? Or what sort of messages or life stories are you going to put into this up-and-coming EP? Yeah, so um, it's definitely a different sound than the first EP. Um, this one's a little bit less of a, an acoustic vibe, and it's more... Um, on the kind of dance pop and R&B kind of side. Um, so, and it definitely does still have, you know, me playing guitar and things like that, but it's, it's just a little bit of a different vibe. Um, so it's, it's really fun. It's really cool. It's, it's, there's still a lot of songs about, you know, love experiences that I've been through, but there's also some more songs just about, you know, other things going on in the world, whether that's, you know, social justice issues or kind of a song along the lines of See Me Rise. There's some songs along those lines where it's like, you know, self-empowering and kind of like you're going for it. Um, and yeah, just some songs about other life things, not necessarily relationships. And there's definitely more like up tempos on this one, more danceable stuff. Other than Pride Fest, are there any other up and coming events Yes. So I am actually performing at the Emerson Theater here in Indy on August 11th. And then I have the Pride Show down in Bloomington on the 25th. And I have a couple shows in September as well. And they'll also be on my website and my social media and all that stuff. For fans tuning in, how can they find you music-wise and info? Yep, so I have my website, which is just emilymaroney.com. And then on Twitter and Instagram, I'm just emily underscore Maroney. And then on Facebook, you can just look up Emily Maroney Music. You can find me on all that stuff. Okay, I think this about wraps up for this interview. Emily, I want to say thank you so much for coming down. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was awesome.